and the many bands playing in Jimi Hendrix's room, the inner sanctum at Bully Bullies. You met his wife, Katie, moments ago, straight from the kitchen. Come on over here, Jay. Step into the light. As you can see, this is an incredible room, one of many. Going to talk sports to Jimmy Equals in just a moment. The whole idea is good food, good fun, and it's all wrapped up into a beautiful package. Did you think, after putting all of this into this wonderful place, celebrating 80 years, okay, that the people would still, here it is, Thursday night, folks, a little after 7, bars packed, and we're getting ready to bring more people here to enjoy some good food. You'll meet them in a little bit. You've got to be awfully pleased. Absolutely. Pleased with the history. I talked to uh, Duke Sun today. He's trying to come up for this 80-year thing, so it's been here a long time. You know, it almost closed at one point. I know you know yeah. that, but yeah. Yeah, because what happened was Duke got ill, gravely ill, was a cancer survivor, and you could see his portrait in that front window every day turning onto Allegheny Street. It was just like a part of New Brighton, and he was here for many years, and because of guys like him, History really continues, but it's evolved in a big way. Duke wouldn't even recognize the place, and he'd still love it, but it is different. Tell me about what you're going to do to celebrate. Because, listen, the Brighton boys, they've got Brighton Billy. Boys, uh, yeah. Ev Evanachko is going to be here this week. Billy the Kid, a lot of stuff happening. Yeah, we have a blues show with Eugene Morgan from the Nightcrawlers. Uh, we have a tribute to Duke. We're doing a DJ with a Motown, oldies. Uh, Duke's uh, son gave me his old glasses, the on Stoney's glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. We got Stoney's coming on tap. We're gonna do those for 50 cents. So, uh, inviting all the old guys that always told me the stories. You know, yeah. I heard a Duke story every day of my life for about four years here. So, that's not exaggeration either. No, they, they love the man. So, that's what we're doing. That was the original tap system, by the way. And the drafts back then were only 35 cents. So they're just a few cents more. Yeah. And a lot of great memories. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. Okay. All right, come on over here. Let's talk to James. Equals. Three equals right now. We got lots of sports to get to, and we're going to begin by no more Billy Goat, no more Bartman, no more Black Cat curses. First since 1908, 108-year drought has come to an end, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, Cubs win, Cubs win. Vince Vaughn, Bill Murray are probably all jumping for joy still on Rush Street in Chicago. Nice win, great franchise. Would have been nicer if it was Terry Francona wasn't meant to be. No, no, and what a game that was last night. That'll, that'll go down in history as one of the best. Little series games of all time. I mean, the way that you know, the way that uh, Cleveland came back, tied that game, sent extra innings. You know, the Cubs breaking the curse. So that's uh, breaking the streak. That's just you know, trem tremendous theater. You know, the thing too that really amazed me, Chapman, after Rajah Davis hit the home run, they could have really just folded up, and they didn't. And they came back, and Ben Zobrist, who was the MVP, and Miguel uh, Montoro actually got them where they needed to be. 8-7 the final, and they win. But it was very impressive how they just continued to stay focused, even when it looked very dire for them at Progressive Field in Cleveland late in that ball. Game. Right, yeah, I mean, you think, you know, you think they, they bring Chapman in, you think it's over. You know, he's, he's four outs away from a, from a championship and gives up the home run, and, and you think they're going to collapse there. They've used, you know, they've used their best pitchers, they've used their best relief pitcher at that point, and they found a way to get it done. All right, now we turn the page. Chris Letang, Mike Sullivan says he could be one of the top three defensemen in the country. Got a power play goal. This guy missed five games, and he got himself an assist. They beat Anaheim 5-1. Matt Murray, 32 saves. Patrick Horn, Chris, along with Brian Rush, Matt Cullen, and Denny Malkin, all scored. Tonight, the LA Kings at the Staples Center, and Marc-Andre Fleury gets the start in net. What's the thought process behind that, do you think? Murray one night, Fleury the next. You know, you have two quality goal, goalkeepers. Uh, you know, I kind of like it. A lot of people complain and saying that the, 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 the keeper is going to complain, but I kind of like the idea that every other night you're going to have a fresh keeper. You're going to have, you know, by the end of the end of the season, your goalie essentially essentially is going to have played half the games that any other keeper has played. You know, it may work out to be you know, health wise. It may work out great, but at this time will tell. One thing we do know about this team: they have a lot of firepower. Absolutely. Yeah, they, you know, obviously with with uh, with Crosby, uh, you know, with Tang just coming back, you saw what a difference he made last night. Again, probably definitely one of the, one of the top defend, defensive players in hockey, and he just makes a complete difference on the team. All right, we move forward now. Hard Rock Stadium Saturday, Pitt five and three at Miami four and four. Nate Peterman against Brad Kaya. And the bottom line is James Conner will be getting the football early and often, as will Mark Walton. I still think this is going to be more ground and pound than airing it out. It's just the thought of it. You know, I think they really need to. I think we saw against Virginia Tech just, just feeding Cole the ball over and over, even though, you know, obviously they lost the game, but he got stronger as the game went on, rushing, so 
and, you know, the Miami team, which really, you know, they started off the season 4 0. Now they've lost four, you know, four in a row. I, you know, I think this is just a perfect game where, where Pitt's coming off a tough loss. They need to go into this game, you know, like you say, ground and pound, and just they need to come out with a win. What about Jordan Whitehead? Do you think he puts too much pressure on himself? Or rightfully so, because he's that good. I think because he's that good. I think when you're, you're that elite of a player, that's probably what makes him great. Because he's definitely he's one of the kids on that team where he's going to play the next level. You, you, you look at the roster and say, who's going to make it the next level? Even though he's just a sophomore, he's, he's going to make it in the next level. NFL Network, Thursday Night Football. It will be on the HD TVs here at Wooly Bullies, along with great food, fine wine and spirits, and the amazing beer selection. Atlanta, Tampa Bay, first time these two teams got together, Tampa Bay got the win, 31-24, but what a difference a few games makes. Right now, Matt Ryan, 2,636 yards, 19 touchdown passes. Some say he's making a move to be the league's MVP. Julio Jones has been unstoppable. I think Jameis Winston, we're still waiting to see consistency with him game, but you've got Doug Martin and Charlie Sims both out for Tampa Bay, so you'd have to think tonight will be a... Uh, Air assault in favor of Atlanta. They should win this. I, I think so. The way Matt Ryan's come on, and and you know everybody talks about Julio Jones, but uh, Muhammad Sanu's come on uh, as a number two receiver. Matt Ryan's been throwing him just as much. Last game, I forget how many game, how many times he targeted him, but you have two quality receivers, a quality quarterback. Yeah, I think Atlanta's going to win this one. All right, Terrell sucks. As I've heard this story before, he's questionable, meaning Big Ben. Ben looking really good, strong, couple of weeks removed since the meniscus surgery, October 17th. Right now, one and six they are without Ben against Baltimore, nine and eight with him. So, you think Ben does come back? I think he does. Now, how healthy he is, you know, obviously he gets injured pretty much every year and he comes back. And usually that first game back, he struggles a little bit, but, uh, but I think he will play this week. 16 touchdowns, 1,685 yards. He's been sacked 11 times. You have to really question the health of this offensive line. Marcus Gilbert still a question, and Marquise Pouncey and others. If they could get healthy, I think Ben can get the time that he needs to make that push to hopefully win the AFC North. Yeah, yeah, he definitely. It all starts up front. I mean, I know it's a cliche that every coach will say, but but it's true, and we're seeing that with the Steelers. You know, as far as uh, Joe Flacco, his left tackle, Ronnie Stanley, is injured, as is his right guard, Marshall Bianca. So Joe Flacco still kind of mending his knee injury from last year, still wearing the brace. So the Steelers have a great opportunity to maybe with Shazir and company blitz this guy and actually maybe get to him early. Yeah, well, really since, the, since the Super Bowl year that he had, and, and he came out with a big contract after that, um, you know, negotiated by Freedom Joe Ritter, as a matter of fact. Right. And uh, But since that year, Flacco really hasn't been great. You know, he had that he was he was good before before that. This Super Bowl year he was tremendous. He's really leveled off since then. I don't think he's been great since then. All right, one thing that you do as does the TimesOnline.com folks better than anyone. High school football. So I'm just gonna put the food on the table and he's gonna dig in and give you his thoughts on what he thinks is gonna happen. Week one, South Park at the Quips. Quips all the way. I mean, they're they don't lose in the playoffs. I don't see them. They turned it up a notch since that clarity. They, they, they really have. They, you know, I didn't think that they were, and they're really not the same team that they've been in the past. But they're still good enough to, to win it all. Mount Pleasant at Beaver Falls. That, yeah, that's the game I'm going to be at tomorrow night. That's a, you know, Beaver Falls is playing really well, but Mount Pleasant's a pretty good team. Uh, they, uh, this could be one that could give them problems. Yeah, they could. They, they definitely could. They, they played with Beaver. Mount Pleasant, they played with Beaver. They played Beaver last year in the first round of the playoffs, and it took Beaver in the fourth quarter to shake them. A couple weeks ago, they played in, in a uh, non-conference game, Beaver and Mount Pleasant. And same thing. It was really the fourth quarter before Beaver was able to pull away. All right, Central Valley at Derriere. My friend Norm Eli, Ely told me that they're banged up big time. Central they are. Valley. They are, and Derry's coming in there. Uh, they're undefeated. Central Valley, you know, a few weeks ago, I thought they were going to be the favorites to win the championship. Now they, they, they played the Clips, they got banged up, they played Beaver Falls, got banged up. Now, you know, they could very well uh, be an upset victim this first round. Freedom at East Allegheny. It's good to see freedom in the playoffs. It, it really is. It really is. You know, and, and you, see, you see a player, a young player, uh, Cody Ross in freedom. Uh, Mark Ross' son, Rich Ross' grandson. Oh, wow. Great linebacker. This kid. This is a kid to watch. He's going to be perhaps the next great one out of the county. Imani Christian at, or Lady of Sacred Heart. And you know what? Coach face you a big reason why they have a football team there. God rest his soul. But I was so happy they started to turn the bend. And to see them in the playoffs makes me happy. Oh, yeah, and their passing attack. I've, I've covered them several times this year. 
and uh, you know, they're strong. Yeah. They can they air it out. And this kid, their quarterback, just a sophomore. He can, he can, he can sling it. He and accurate, and he, he can make all the throws. So he's going to be another big time recruit in a couple of years. All right, Jim equals Beaver County Times. They'll have all of this stuff for you over the weekend. Best thing, subscribe, timesonline.com, or better yet, have them throw the paper on your doorstep. Don't you love it? Aberworth, the running lopes at the upstart, Ronnie, Shiro, Riverside, Panthers, and I'm just wishing them nothing but the best. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah. I, I, Aberworth's very good, but I don't think they can beat Riverside. Riverside's, you know, rolling the playoffs. Coach Shiro's really got them, you know, playing well. Riverview at Rochester, and what a run this year for Coach Match. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Rochester, they're tremendously strong this year, and I, they're up there. I don't know if they're going to, they would, would be clear to Time out, time out for food. Go ahead, bring it in here, young man. <laughs> Thank you. you. What's your name? Ah, uh, Scott and Bruce. How are you? Nice yeah. to meet you. Nice, 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 nice to meet you. I don't know what it is. What is That's that? our um, coop house braised uh, pork. We use this pulled pork here with a uh, gouda cheese, and we made um, our bourbon garlic barbecue sauce with some nachos. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you very much. Suitable for halftime snacking. All right, let's get back to um, Riverside, uh, Riverview, rather, in Rochester. What What is it about Rochester that has turned their program around? You know, their uh, quarterback, Ian Kuba. He came on last year. They were, I think they were two and two at one point. Uh, they sort of hit a quarterback. They only lost one game the rest of the way. Unfortunately, that was the game that knocked them out of class. But this year, they're unbeaten with Kuba quarterback. He can throw it, he can run it, he's, he's the total package, so he's been the difference there. You know, somebody said you have to have good peripheral vision. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Just get a picture of him, Naomi. Rick Okrashevsky, he's thinking Hillary, Hillary Clinton, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk politics, great union labor. And you see this place, it wasn't probably union labor. I think Jay did it himself. But this is what happens when you are good with your hands and tools. Great carpentry work, and we're going to talk to him in just a little bit. Excited about that. Okay, Southside at Washington. You know, Southside, it's really hard to get a read on them this year. They, there's some games they play really well, other games I think they're going to win, and they lost. Uh, they may be one and done this year. North Hills at West Allegheny. Bob Palka was supposed to have a down year. I know. He, yeah. Somebody just forgot to tell him. Yeah, though. exactly. He, is, he may be, you know, Probably the best coach in, in the Woodville right now. He is, just, he's, and he's a tremendous human being too. And yeah, they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna get stopped before the uh, big championship game. All right, speak. Jim Equals with the Beaver County Times coming up next. We're talking election 2016 with Rick Okrzeszewski.